Hello everyone and welcome to another DC Universe Online Livestream. My name is Meps, I am your community manager, and this is Jack Emmert. Say hello, Jack. Hey everybody, how are you? Make sure your mic works, seems yeah. good. Um, the Daybreak Austin CEO. And, yes, uh, I am. Our, yeah. our, our leader here on DC Universe Online. Um, today we're not here to actually talk very much about DC Universe Online. We might drop a few things, but no, it's not our focus. Yeah, but in-game we're celebrating Superman's 80th anniversary. Um, with some cool content and cool rewards and stuff. Um, so, but you know that is all inspired by obviously 80 years of awesome Superman comics. Yes, indeedy. And what better thing to talk about than the single best-selling DC comic of all time, uh, the death of Superman? Absolutely. So we're gonna hit that and a couple more uh, in depth, and then um, uh, just kind of take some questions about Superman, Superman yep. comics, and and go from there. This is. If you've read these before, you know, this is a nice trip down memory lane. Or if you haven't, this is uh, what to read next. These are Jack's. So certainly it's going to be a trip down my memory lane. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so let's jump right into it. Um, I have pulled some uh, images to kind of preview uh, from these comics. Mm -hmm. And let's just, uh, let's just be clear, there will be some spoilers. We're not going to go out of our way to spoil. But if you want a pure reading of these books, you know. This is not the live stream for you. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, all of these comics have been out for uh, a while. Uh, so, And all of them are available in graphic novel format or on Comixology. So highly recommend that you go out uh, to your local bookstore, to Amazon, uh, uh, Barnes & Noble, um, your local comic store. Wow, that would be terrific. And, of course, Comixology, great place to get all your DC comics digitally. Definitely. All right, so uh, first up, we're going to go to The Death of Superman, as you mentioned, um, and uh, this was 1992. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that would have been in the fall, right? December 92 yeah. is what I have on my sheet here. Uh, that's when the issue came out, but but it was a storyline that actually started before that. Okay. Yeah. And then lasted uh, really through the whole thing for almost a year. Yeah, so there was The Death of Superman th the year after that was the... Uh, Reign of Superman, where different people came and tried to take his mantle. But yes, uh, yep. Death of Superman was... Uh, I, I was working in a comic book store uh, that summer, uh, and uh, then I went off uh, to work on my second master's degree. And I remember very distinctly, uh, because obviously... I still collected comics, but the comic store would be putting aside the stuff that I had. This is outside Philadelphia, Showcase Comics. Still open Shout today, out. I should add. Um, and uh, uh, they were putting my stuff aside, and I just remember like calling and just double-checking, make sure you put aside the Death of Superman stuff. And they said that uh, the mall at that, uh, the, the store at that time was in the Granite Run Mall, and the line was just wrapped around everywhere. And mall security had to come out, and uh, the the whole thing was just, it was a real phenomenon, you know? And we take it for granted that superheroes are pretty mainstream now, but in 92, like, having a local news station broadcast from the location showing the line for Death of Superman, mm -hmm. or having USA Today cover a, a, a comic thing is pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, it was super exciting. It was painful, because I had to wait to get those comics until it could get shipped to me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was it was super great. In 92, I was definitely not getting my second master's degree. Yeah, that's that's uh, true. But I do remember it, which probably speaks to to uh, the, the monumental nature of the event. Um, but, okay, let's go back to the early 90s, late 80s. Tell us what comics are like uh, leading up to that instrument and maybe what happened afterwards, just in broad strokes. Or maybe in contrast to today, if that helps. Well, you know, the biggest difference is back then that, uh, by and large, comics didn't have a ton of uh, consequences. So uh, nothing really bad happened to characters. It was very rare. Okay. Uh, and so... They didn't die. Right. Characters in general didn't die. There was only a couple of instances where that actually happened. Uh, and especially in DC, it, it didn't happen. Um and when this, with, with some small, with one major exception, that was Barry Allen the Flash in Crisis on Infinite Earths, and that was shocking. But the idea that Superman would go anywhere would be impossible. And of course they did the baking, breaking of the bat, uh, which happened before this, if memory serves. 
but there, that was kind of neat because Bruce Wayne wasn't dead or disappeared or anything. This was literally taking Superman out of the picture for a full year. Uh, and you had really no idea how he was going to enter back into the picture. Um, the other thing that comics didn't really do... Uh, oh, is the uh, mic too close to my mouth, guys? Okay. Is that better? Let me turn you up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Guys, I said Barry Allen. Um, They're on like a 30-second delay. Oh, so. okay, got it. So uh, at any rate, um, uh, the fact that n the other big thing that comics didn't do was there wasn't a lot of mystery. So in other words, things were usually pretty well explained out, what was happening, why it was happening. And there weren't a lot of comics where you really didn't know what was going on. Mm. And uh, Doomsday was really the first one because here was this character that took Superman on and frankly decimated everybody against him. But you had no idea where it was from or what its motivation was. It just was killing everything. And of course, uh, Superman uh, ends up sacrificing his life. Yeah, here's the... Like, you just didn't even know who this was. Like, you, you didn't know what it looked like underneath there. That was a surprise. Uh, you didn't know what it was doing or why it was doing. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, not explained at all. His fist just kind of shows up. Yeah, then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, it it, uh, it it starts far earlier when he's actually on an asteroid. We don't have the, that. Uh, and he gets uh, freed from this asteroid. So, in theory, he's kind of like chained up and you, you, you just don't really know what it is. Uh, and that was really cool, too. And you, you still never really knew. You know, it's taken a long time. And, of course, there's been several iterations of Doomsday since then uh, to refine and come up with a good backstory. Uh, in fact, Many, is, yeah. Anybody, yeah, is anybody watching Krypton right now? Krypton is phenomenal. And Doomsday's really? stays in that, yeah, which is just incredible. Your, your opinions always, always surprise me a little bit. Um, oh, I love Krypton. But, I think it's yeah. fantastic. It's awesome. Um, okay, so what preceded the storyline immediately? Like, like, what was Superman doing? What, or what would be a routine thing he was doing in, in a book before this that is obviously different in this kind of book? Um, I mean, you know, a classical example would be that, uh, you know, Superman would go and defeat Mongol on War World because War World was menacing uh, our, our star system. Or, you know, he... he it, it was much more straightforward threats, not that Doomsday isn't straightforward, but at least you're dealing with a villain who had a motivation that was usually to uh, defeat Superman, like Lex Luthor, uh, or he was saving the city or saving the planet, something along those lines. And then um, we mentioned a little bit, you know, what comes immediately after this. Obviously, we have kind of the whole wrapping up of this storyline with other Superman, and then he finally comes back, right? Yeah, sure, yeah, um, the reign of the Superman. And but, that was terrific because they introduced these uh, several different characters who assumed the title of Superman. I, I was corrected. So uh, uh, Breaking of the Bat was a little after. Uh, 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 I thought it was the summer before, so it must have been right. the summer after because I was working in the comic book store when the Breaking of the Bat happened. Um, so anyway... Um, so, yeah, they introduced these new characters, uh, Superboy and Steel, and uh, who would someone who would later become Eradicator. Um, uh, and then there's, of course, this Cyborg Superman. Uh, so, uh, and you didn't really know who those characters were and what they were doing either. So there was a whole mystery as to where these people came from and what they did. Uh, and, of course, they made huge impact. And if you think about it, the number of new characters that get introduced in, in comics is, is pretty massive, but very few of them stick. Mm. But uh, Superboy stuck, and uh, so did Steel, and so did Eradicator, actually, uh, and uh, uh, the Cyborg Superman. Yeah. So all of them have maintained now for decades, and that's that's extremely rare, given all the characters that get introduced at any, any time uh, in in comic book lore it just shows you the power that that storyline had. And if I remember right, there was mystery as far as which one was maybe the real Superman. Yeah, there right? was, you would think th they were hinting that one of them was, or could be. Yeah. Uh, and of course, out of all of them, only uh, theoretically Superboy would be because uh, he had Kryptonian DNA, but that would be the only one. 
Would you say, or how would you say this um, this storyline impacted DC Comics? You know, from this point forward, or in the years to come. Like, <laughs> well, like what's different? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they realized that uh, you know nothing needs to be sacrosanct. And uh, there, of course, evidently was the breaking of the bat later when other people assumed the role of Batman. Uh, and that's actually happened uh, several times since. Um, there has been um, a lot more willingness to shake up um, uh, the um, status quo. So like mm. Gotham City, No Man's Land series where uh, Gotham had a plague and an earthquake and the federal government decided to abandon it. Um, those sorts of things that were large, huge changing, uh, uh, new Krypton, uh, when uh, Kandorians actually get to f- uh, raise to full size and they decide to uh, recreate Kryptonian society on another planet in our solar system and so forth. Awesome. This is a crossover event. Yes. Um was and here in the of... here in the slides, everybody can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is uh, the Justice League, uh, Guy Gardner and uh, Fire uh, among he wrecks many. everybody. Yeah, he right. just he just goes right through everybody. And it's it's pretty brutal. Like it's drawn. Uh, yeah, exactly. You see people like bruised and battered and bleeding, and that wasn't very common either, right? Like Superman is bleeding in this, yeah. and I think uh, that was, if not the first time, one of the first times. Ah, uh, good old Blue Beetle. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, um, this was a crossover event. Were there more crossover events after this because of its success? Um, did this kind of make that uh, a, go-to, a go-to thing to do? I think that there had always been crossover events. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether it made it any more frequent or not. I'd have to go back and take a look. Uh, I, I know that there were... Um, several years in which all the annuals of DC would cross over amongst each other, but I I I don't think this preceded those. Um, but somebody who's uh, listening to the chat can take a look um, and quick do a Google search. But you know there was Invasion Earth. That, I think that was actually before, but there was okay. Bloodlines. Um, there were several. I guess it's just the most well known. Yeah, it is. Yeah it, yeah, it it, it totally is. Okay, let's talk about Doomsday. Um, he's he's a little bit different than uh, Superman villains that come before, right? Yep. Um, yeah. How he's, so? Well, he's he is pure rage. He has no particular vendetta other than destruction, and he's just as powerful as Superman. And it's clear that Superman can't really handle him, uh, and that it's going to take everything that Superman has to be able to eventually defeat him. And there'd never really been a character like that. Certainly, um, uh, even after uh, John Byrne sort of lowered Superman's power level, he was unquestionably, at least at this stage, uh, one of the most powerful beings in the universe. Uh, And as a result, the fact that anything could come close to him without using kryptonite was, or, you know, red sun technology, was impossible to fathom. Um, is it correct to say that a lot of times because Superman was so strong, villains come at him with a cunning plan or well, yeah, technology or crypto? Yeah, always. Right? You know, you've got Toy Man or Lex Luthor. You know, they're always trying to find this other side angle or other way. Uh, you know, even the the uh, giant ape Giganto, um, he's got kryptonite eye beams. Mm. Uh, so very rarely was there actually just a stand up and fight villain uh, that... Uh, he would encounter, right? Uh, uh, Metallo would have the kryptonite in his chest. Um, so usually they're always resorting to that. There was nobody where Superman was put on his back heels and really had to think, huh, well, how am I going to take this person on? Yeah. And Titano, that's... thank you. And that's Oh, uh, it... Giganto, gosh. Wrong, sorry, that was Marvel. <laughs> Oops. Um, but yeah, but that's what Doomsday is. Doomsday is they decided to go straight up. Straight up? Nobody had ever really wrong. done that, yeah. Almost no brain inside, right? It's, yeah, it's no kinda... no fathomable brain. Yeah. Um, I'd forgotten you were doing the clips. I'd forgotten that he laughed in this. So, um, You know, even that, he doesn't really talk. You, you really don't know. I love the fact that he's fighting literally with one arm tied behind his back. For most of the fight, right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. 
And yeah, so actually, he actually evolves kind of like yeah. He gets his costume. Um, I don't know. He I, gets kind of torn down, and then you know his bony growths start right. growing. And I believe that the more damage he takes, the more the bony growths kind of grow out. And so they, you know, he ends up having spikes that he's hitting Superman with that can penetrate Superman's skin. Yeah, it's uh, not only does he get his arm back, but he evolves. It's, it's um, it's pretty cool as as far as that goes. Um, he also uh, like this is a what is this? This is kind of a long fight, right? This is like a yeah. This several, lasts for like you know right? ten was, issues or something. Was yeah. that common to have just a fight? No, that no, end, no, no, no. Right? Definitely, it was not not one that just kept on going and going and going and going. Um, yeah, and then also the panels got larger and larger and larger towards the end. You know, right. the more panoramic scenes, uh, uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, do we have do we have uh, any giveaways we're doing in this? Oh, we can do some giveaways. We can do some trivia okay, at the it. end. Okay, yeah. got it. Somebody's asking for free food. Sorry, that's that's on the free, food's on you. Free food. But they asked for giveaways, so I'm saying um, yes. Uh, yeah, sure. We can we can definitely do that. In fact, we can do that for anybody in chat, or we can do that with a trivia question. Yeah, and by the way, guys, the whole this whole talk was sort of my genesis because I thought that maybe some people would like to hear a little bit of background on some of the storylines that we're putting into the game, so that you could actually then go to the comics and see what our inspiration was. So uh, that was the reason. If you guys like this, we plan to do more, and if you don't, well, then we won't. You know, we we've got our regulars with uh, SJ, and that's great. Yeah, for sure. So let's do some trivia right when we get to the end of the kind of death of Superman. And then we'll move on to the next book. Sound good? Yeah, okay, sure. Okay. Sure, of course, everybody can uh, probably Google everything. Well, first... Actually, wait, let's go back. Can we go back? Yep. Uh, one more. One more. Stop. Okay. I've got good trivia. <laughs> Ready? Right now, you want to do one? Yeah, sure. Why okay. not? Sure. Okay, so what are we giving away? Uh, let's give away 500 uh, Marketplace Cash. 500 Marketplace Cash. Okay, guys. So uh, there is a character... Uh, by the name of Bloodwind. He has a red cape. He's got the white tights there. Uh, it, as you can see, he's he has the, the energy uh, around his eyes. Ready? Who is he? Bloodwind is is someone else. No, no, no. I already told you it was Bloodwind. But it's actually another hero in disguise. Who is it? Now we wait. Yeah, now, now we... Now we... Martian Manhunter? Is that correct? You are a thousand percent correct. Martian Manhunter. All right. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Jack, uh, I will contact you on Twitch. <laughs> that's great. Mr. And Mrs. Jack, is that just for me? No, it's, that's, that's the name. Well, no, that's good. Um, Not Sam Wilson. Um, this is also Bloodwind was a big mystery. Like, all these things were really strange in comics. Not knowing who Doomsday was, you don't know who Bloodwind is. Like, it just, that kind of stuff was pretty darn rare. All right, trivia done. Okay, we'll good. do more throughout. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, um, real quick, Superman rides this challenge uh, as he, I guess, always does, um, really. So, what is classically Superman about this story, and what is classically not Superman about the story? You know, what is what is very different here? Obviously, he dies. I uh, probably the fact that he dies is probably the biggest thing, biggest change. Um, you know, it's that the the willingness to sacrifice everything, his constant preoccupation with. Um, casualties with getting getting people getting the battle away from metropolis trying to get everyone safe uh that is a hallmark of any superman comic right other characters approach it differently okay do you want to say anything about the art style for this book well the, it, it depends uh if i remember correctly this is from superman man of steel they each have there's a different artist doing each book. Sure. Um, my my per, Dan Jurgens, uh, that Dan Jurgens did that. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his last name, by the way. Uh, and then Tom Grummet, uh, those were my two favorite artists in this particular series. And Dan Jurgens uh, is um, uh, has become a very prolific writer and artist, and he wrote. Uh, or excuse me, he drew uh, the climax, a very famous scene of Lois holding him and uh, him kind of sprawled over her arms with uh, a Superman cape flag. Um, 
We have a so bunch yeah, of he, yeah, this is Dan Jurgens. So actually, here's the example. This is the last issue uh, where they did they did like a countdown. So they do three panels a page, two panels a page, and then one panel a page. And so now we're at the last. Uh, uh, the last uh, issue in the last battle. So, yeah. I mean, I was always taken by the the, the blood. Yeah, sure. Like, that always seemed to stand out for me. This might be the first time that Superman had blood, but I, I don't... Uh, certainly, it wasn't as prevalent before. Yeah. So, here we are, almost at the climax. It's also interesting they didn't do the sounds, like crack of doom and all that. Right. right? They just let the just visuals... Show it. Yeah, just show it. And then here's that. Kind yeah, of... yeah. This is the famous uh, scene. I think there's one. Is there? Do you have the one after that? Yeah, this is it. I sure do. Right. Yeah. Yep. That 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 is the uh, big uh, uh, classic image from all of this. Awesome. All right. So finally, as we're wrapping up Death Superman, you know, top reason to go read it right now. Top reason? Well, because you know our DC World content's all about Doomsday right there now, so it's your best. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's the best way to do it, you know. And look, if if you're playing DC World, you like comics on some level, uh, and it is uh, probably one of the top selling comic series of all time. Uh, so uh, I recommend that you go in and uh, you, you know, if you haven't read it, you should because it was that monumental. Awesome. All right. One more trivia about Death of Superman? Okay, one more trivia about the Death of Superman. Uh, let's see. Who can... What, what Death of Superman question can I ask? And then we'll also take some questions from chat uh, if we can watch them in the scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I asked about Bloodwind. Which is pretty obscure. And someone got it immediately. Well, yeah, they should be able to get it. Um if memory serves during this period, Guy Gardner is not a lantern. What is his name? Guy Gardner, what is his superhero name at this time? Where is Power Girl? Uh Power Girl wasn't in this. Uh I uh she wasn't around. Yep, there you go. Warrior. There you go, Chili Cat. Cat. Warrior. You got it. Chill cat, I will contact you after the show. Yeah. You want to move on to yeah, uh, yeah. to Doomed? Yeah, sure. All right. So um, there have been a lot of different um, Doomsday, uh, you know, revisits. Right? Yeah. It, there's been a ton of Doomsday stories. We couldn't obviously get to them all. But Superman Doomed was 2014 in the very New 52. Very recent, yep. Um, and also ties in with a lot of where the inspiration to our in-game content comes from, as far as the plague and the or plague or yeah, stuff, exactly right. right. Yeah, th that uh, this was a primary inspiration for us, actually. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So 2014 is the new 52. Um, but it's going? so yeah, it's not the new 52 Superman. So it's actually the original Superman who's crossed into our uh, into this particular universe. The new 52 Superman at this point has actually died. Okay. And uh, this is the original Superman who had faced Doomsday previous, has all of those memories, and recognizes exactly what the threat is, what's going on, and so forth. Okay. Uh, so that's really kind of interesting. Um, uh, and if memory serves, this is the second appearance of Doomsday in Rebirth. Uh, he he appears earlier in Action Comics, and then this is his second appearance in a large, lengthy storyline. Okay, got it. Yeah. Are are you sure that it's the it's the old Superman? Yes, I'm a hundred percent sure. It's because this Superman is married to Lois and uh, has a son, John. Um, you know, you're shaking your head. He doesn't uh, date. Or is this when this, he's this dating is, Wonder this Woman? This is Superman dating Wonder Woman. Oh, Superman yeah. dating Wonder Woman. Yeah, Sorry. so this would be... Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Of course you are. Yeah, it's when he's still dating Wonder Woman. So this is the original... This is the this new is 52. The new Superman. So, yeah, so let's talk about... Let's explain that. Who Who is the new Superman versus the old Superman? Or, or what's different about this new Superman, right? Well, the new Superman... Uh, uh, basically, Lois Lane is a colleague, but they have no yeah, relationship. Yeah, his relationships are different, right? Uh, uh, and he's in love with Wonder Woman, and they have a relationship, as opposed to in old DC... Uh, Superman, uh, he was married and had a child. And just to talk to the New 52 a little bit, this is the reboot that kind of made everyone younger with a shorter history, right? Yeah, they tried to coll they were collapsing everything. They redid the origin of the Justice League, uh, and they went back uh, to ground zero on many of the characters and reintroduced them in a new in a new way. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead since we're already talking about it, but uh, obviously he he knows Lois Lane. Lois Lane's a colleague. They're not yep. romantically involved. Nope. He knows Wonder Woman. They are romantically involved. Yes. Um, I am clearly Team Wonder Woman, but it's your live stream, so what do you think? So uh, <laughs> I don't... You know, obviously the relationship with Lois Lane having a son is interest more interesting because it brings up a lot more interesting themes in mm-hmm. terms of you know what is it to be a human what is it to be a father what is it to be a husband those type of things okay so you're on you're on yeah I, I i like the original but you know that's me cool um okay what's different about this doomsday well this particular doomsday uh gets defeated uh, I think that's, uh, I guess that's sure. Sure. he gets defeated pretty quickly in the grand scheme of things. It's certainly hard, but uh, I don't in know, the, it was like a 500 page comic book. I read that no, no. But the, the very beginning of it is the fight. And what happens is that in this fight, uh, Superman ends up uh, taking in what are spores and begin to transform him into a doomsday creature himself. Right. A super doom. Uh, and this is not something that we've seen before, and it's a really nice twist, right? Like, you become your own worst enemy, so to speak. And in this case, it's it's, it's literally... Uh, uh, f- the art in this, by the way, is gorgeous. It really is. Uh, really love it. Uh, and I love this particular version of Doomsday with the tusks and everything. I think it's it's pretty cool. Um, that is what we took inspiration for for yeah, our in-game yeah. new Doomsday. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I play a DC miniatures game. Uh, I play Heroclix, and I also play uh, painted miniatures, and they have a great Doomsday based on this uh, that I that I have painted up. I should have brought it in, into work. So yeah, next time. Yeah, next time. So these are yeah this terrific art so he battles he inhales he gets these oh also doomsday has this sort of kill field around him so wherever he goes he kind of kills uh any Everything. living thing that's around him so no other hero can fight this particular doomsday for too long they can't take it only superman can do it and even superman is is limited in standing in there yeah exactly there's only so so much he can do not that people don't try um but yeah, let's talk about the plague aspect. So, um, so yeah, he inhales the spores, turns into this doomsday and uh, uh, super doom, and of course humanity is scared. So uh, the the military acts, and how would you be able to defeat Superman? Well, kryptonite. So they release kryptonite into the air, and what does it do? It suppresses. Superman's Kryptonian nature and brings out the Doomsday nature even more. And so it makes it worse. <laughs> and Superman basically has to leave the planet because he's he's completely losing his mind and body to the Doomsday virus. Yeah, I, I found that to be really interesting how the physicality of the fight happens and then afterwards... Um... That's a great panel. Yeah, that's good. Um, afterwards, it's an internal battle. It's a yep. mental battle. Yeah, and there's a lot of discussions in his head between Doomsday and Superman, right? Uh, which side is is getting more powerful? Here's the frame when he realizes there's something wrong with him uh, because he acts really violently uh, and crashes this plane uh, that is hunting wolves. Uh, and uh, uh, he realizes, like, what's wrong with me? And as you could say, he says, you dirty son of, you know, so forth. Yeah, and he, yeah, he loses his mind. Um. So this is him being confronted by Wonder Woman. And he's holding her the lasso and telling her the truth. And he's just like, you know, you could see he's physically, they're the bony growths, the skin's turn gray, and he's turning into Doomsday at this moment. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and they fight a bit. I think I have a panel of... Yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah, there it is. There's that internal my, monologue, and this continues for quite a long time. But this is really only a fraction of the overall storyline because, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, back in Metropolis, uh, Brainiac is managing to uh, insinuate himself into Lois Lane's mind, and then uses her as a factotum uh, to then try to take Metropolis. Yeah. Uh, and also Smallville. So people in Smallville, Metropolis, start lapsing into comas. Nobody can figure out. Then, they, then lo and behold, it's Brainiac is a, arriving on Earth and bringing with him all of his drones. He wants to capture Metropolis and Smallville. And now Superman 
cannot be on the planet or else he'll succumb to the doomsday virus. So he's now in outer space trying to battle Brainiac and his ship coming in. And meanwhile, people on Earth are trying to mobilize the defenses to fight off Brainiac. Yeah, it's a big storyline. Yeah, it's, it really is. it's an immense epic and it, it draws on characters that are pretty darn diverse. I mean, they end up going to the Phantom Zone to get help from Mongol and the Phantom King. Uh, uh, and as well as Superman is uh, in in the galaxy, uh, he has a run in with a hero on another planet, um, a, some to that point unknown hero. Uh, so that that's really uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty intense. I mean, it's a really yeah. because it's not unlike the original uh, Death of Superman, which is very straightforward. He fights Doomsday, he dies. Eh. Uh, this is much more of a of a sweeping tale where the doomsday aspect is just a portion of the overall. This panel uh, here, what do you think about the choice to draw Super Doom in the costume and Superman as Clark? Yeah, no, it is interesting where he he sees his identity is of uh, is as Clark Kent. Um, that's you know. Go, it, it goes to the nature of Superman, right? He's just the small kid from Smallville. I mean, even in uh, the movie Man of Steel 2 at the end, he's like, hey, I'm just a, a kid from Smallville. You don't need to worry. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have a couple more panels just, just to kind of um, give people a look at this. Uh, yeah, that's that's when another Amazon was trying to take him on. This is when he's going to outer space. And you know it's a big noise when it's crack of doom. Right. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> yeah. the ultimate. Yeah, that's word, the right? that's like the uh, that is the uh, ultimate. Obviously the story is drawn inspiration from the Death of Superman which you just looked at. Um what is most strikingly different about the art? Uh art or or just the book overall? Well, I I think the book overall, you know, the biggest difference is that the main threat I mean, it's the in, doomsday becomes an internal, not an external struggle, and it gets utilized in order to battle yeah. against Brainiac as a as a tool uh, for to be able to for good to triumph. There was uh, Brainiac. To Lois yeah, Lane. there's Brainiac uh, as uh, Lois Lane and what she's up to. Uh, force field descends over Metropolis. So, um, yeah. And I love how they, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll use it as a trivia question, what they do in the Phantom Zone. But that's really good. Do you want to do trivia right now? Uh, sure. Uh, why don't we do an easy one since we just did Brainiac. Okay. Uh, what planet is Brainiac from? What planet is Brainiac from? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, I love the art here. Is the it, answer Kolu? It is Kolu, spelled with a C, Legion World. Oh, it's good, well named. Legion World, I yeah. will contact you after this. Indeed. Um, if you don't, we, we we couldn't find our copy. I don't know who has it. Death of Superman? Yeah, I think yeah. our executive producer has it. Oh. It's pro I Let's think blame it, her. Yes. Yeah, I think it's on her, uh, on her. She's probably at home. She's sick today, actually. Uh, she's probably at home watching this. Um, it is a terrific hardcover. I I love it. Or you could buy it digitally. Um, and it was yeah, it was huge. It was a billion pages on Comicsology. Yeah, 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 it's really it's good. It's like five hundred pages long. Yeah, but it the battle against uh, uh, Brainiac is really super cool because that's another threat. Another shout out to Krypton. Brainiac is in the whole subtext of Krypton. If you're watching uh, the sci-fi series, is that Brainiac is coming to seize Kandor? Uh, so uh, it's it's excellent. I haven't seen the finale yet, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. All right, so that's Superman Doomed. Um, your next pick was All Star Superman. Ah, uh, yeah, All Star Superman. So do you have the? I have them here. We do. These I do have. So here. So if you were to read a single Superman story in your life, it should be All-Star Superman. Um, it is, I believe, a short 12 issues or 10. It is, they do have uh, graphic novels, softcover, hardcover, uh, but it is, 
definitely the single best. It encapsulates everything uh, that makes Superman tick. Grant Morrison is brilliant, uh, brilliant comic writer. And what he's done in this series is really make Superman a mythical character. Mm. And I mean mythical in the very classic, like, Greek myth sense. And in fact, he even has before, uh, in this particular series, he does die or disappear at the end. And he, he completes a number of labors. And uh, uh, it's this is introduced to him or told to him uh, by a couple of characters that are time travelers, two superhumanly strong uh, uh, Greek gods, uh, or one is a Greek god, one's an Old Testament figure, Samson uh, and Atlas. And yeah, there's like, yeah, before before Superman dies, he completes these labors. And the most of this story is the tale of all the different labors that he has. Yep. And many of these are, um, for example, he goes to the Underverse. Um, well, that's like, the, the parallel to going to the underworld uh, to catch uh, Cerebus, which would be Hercules. Um, he answers the riddle of the Chrono Sphinx um, instead of the Sphinx, that are, that would be Oedipus. Uh, so, uh, and it, it plays him in that. And there's so many endearing elements to it, too. There's a whole issue where it's him as Clark Kent. And he is trying to interview Lex Luthor. Yeah, we have some of those, oh, God. those panels. <laughs> Jeez, so. that is so brilliant. Um, I'm not going to get to them. And the artist, so. of course, uh, Frank Whiteley is terrific. Um, takes him forever to pencil anything, but it's it's truly magical. Um, uh, it's yeah, I mean, great. He, this, this is maybe the classic shot from those series. Yeah, there he is sitting in the clouds watching over Metropolis. Yeah, and it's, it's a, it's a the nice posture cover. is not what you expect. Right. right? It, it It's demure, right? It's, yeah, it's a small farm boy. Like, wow, look at what I can do. And that is always with him uh, uh, throughout this series that as he's doing these mythic things, he's still just a person. Um, he's not, he's greater than life and ability, but not greater in life and personality. So this is 2005 through eight. Um, so this is right before development on DCO started or as it was starting and kind of actually right in the middle of when, um, hmm. you know, we would have most been looking at comics and, and kind of drawing inspiration from, but this is out of continuity. Yes. Right? So, so how does that impact it? Yeah, it, it isn't what all the characters and everything in here, it's self-contained. It doesn't relate. It, it isn't considered part of, the original continuity or of rebirth continuity or new 52 continuity. It's its own thing, but it takes elements from the original Superman and essentializes everything down into uh, uh, the canonical stories. So instead of having Zod, there's another story about two Kryptonians coming and, and instead of being criminals, they're just normal people. And they're like, what are you doing? Why aren't you rebuilding Krypton? We're just going to do it. And, uh, uh, but they realize the error of their ways, and Superman shows them that what they're doing is wrong. Well, and also this panel is, or this page in four panels is, are retelling the whole. Yeah, exactly. Book, right? Yeah, it's like, it's it the gets right to the story, point, right? <laughs> but it's it's nicely done. Um, okay, uh, obviously this version of Superman is different. It's drawing on previous eras and iterations. Um, but what stands out to you about this as far as what you see as being classically Superman here or, or what's, what's kind of a... Well, it's really the, the down-home, the down-homedness of... Uh, but he's even more powerful than anything that's ever been done in comics before. You know, he's, he's rescuing people uh, from the surface of the sun. That's actually how he ends up dying. He absorbs too much solar radi radiation. And this whole... He knows that. He's dying through this whole period. And this is his last labors before he dies and becomes legend. Uh, and um, this is the particular character uh, that's introduced uh, in this series who's a super scientist, he's brilliant, he's kind of like a Steve Jobs figure, uh, and um, but beneficent as opposed to Lex Luthor. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, I guess all of these books have Superman dying or very almost dying. Right? Yeah, because you know, he's a character you don't envision dying yeah. ever. It's so as a result, the one thing you can do to him to make it interesting is, is threaten him with death sure. because it's the one thing that seems least likely. Where Death Superman was one long fight. Yep. This is a quick fight 
or barely a fight. Really. Right, he's not even fighting. He just flies in the sun, rescues these people, and in the act of his heroism is what causes him. He overpowers his cells. He has too much solar radiation. And then he knows he's dying. Yep, he knows. The the, and this is the point at which he reveals to Lois Lane who he is. So, yeah, I wouldn't mention that. His, his relationships here kind of go through the whole gamut, right? Yep. Like he starts off, and um, I mean, this has been done a billion different ways. Yep. Different times, right? And again, it's another five-panel page of Hey, by the way, I'm super yeah, cool. here it is. And it just condenses that whole thing into just and then they have the great thing of him taking her to the Fortress of Solitude and he's kind of romancing, you know, bringing flowers, making dinner. Uh, and she's like, what? You're such a jerk for not telling me the truth. Um, yeah, she's angry at him. Right? Yeah, this is a different Lois, too. It's yeah, kind of she, take, right? she's very strong willed. Um, uh, very strong willed, very informed by the Margot Kidder version uh okay uh, rest in peace yeah she had an attitude i didn't expect yes yeah. very much so um and yeah this is him in the four and he gives her place. his power so he can share them with her yeah uh, so and then when she's in a fortress of solitude her mind gets messed up i've forgotten what the particles are something she gets uh too close to and she gets crazy and paranoid thinking superman's up to something uh but it, obviously that turns out to be false yeah she runs to confront him yeah, here here it is. She shoots him with a Krypton thing, and but he's soaked up so much solar radiation that he just shrugs it off. He's like, "Oh wow!" And here's the prize surprise. Like, here you go. You get to experience this. And then introducing Atlas and Samson is so much fun. Here's the Chrono Sphinx. This is where he has to answer the uh, the riddles of the Chrono Sphinx. And basically, these two morons, Samson and Atlas, have stolen that necklace, and Chrono Sphinx go, comes back in time to get it, uh, and. <laughs> they're they're just two characters I wish were in mainstream continuity because they're hilarious because they're basically buffoons right and there you go and then th that's the answer they surrender yeah it's a it's a nice mental uh, twist which is backwards um, yeah, so, Do Doomsday does not make an appearance in this well he gets mentioned he, right? yeah right here you go um, here's a mention so it's still inspiration there um, but then we kind of get a little bit of super doomed ish, right? Yeah. Where Superman gets hit with black kryptonite and becomes yep. his opposite. Yep. Yeah, and becomes mean. You see his rage again and how terrifying and angry Superman is. Um, does that does that strike you as as kind of um, being something super doomed? Maybe you took inspiration from? Is, do you see a direct link there? Not, I, I think know. there's always been. They've always played around with you know kryptonite subverting Superman's powers or his mentality. I mean, heck, even Superman three. If you're old like me, right? There was the evil Superman in that. In this one, I noticed there's um, really three personas for Superman. There's Superman. There's Clark Kent as the bumbling around guy. Oh, and God, Clark yeah, Kent he's hilarious. The, you know, yeah. himself, right? You know, I think I, I I haven't talked to Grant Morrison ever, and so uh, there's the Doomsday-ish. Uh, ish. Yeah, it's not quite. Um, yeah. The um, There's a lot of the 1979 Superman in this, okay. where Clark Kent is overly buffoonish, right? Almost cartoonishly, ridiculously dumb. Well, and they, they draw him physically different, right? Yeah, he's, like he's all slumped and yeah. like look at his shoulders and his clothing's all rumpled. Uh, he's tripping over stuff. But what's great is that when you're reading this, he's he's tripping and and coughing and doing all these things, but he's saving Lex Luthor's life yeah. while he's doing it, right. right? But he's masking it and all these other things. And, um, you know, Ken is, uh, Clark Ken is pretending to be impressed or, you know, pretending to be idiotic, but here's one of them. Yeah, he and, stumbles takes his glasses yeah. off, lays or something. Yeah, and then the, what what happens is the parasite gets too close. Superman doesn't know the parasite's in the prison and uh, <laughs> starts leeching the energy in, in from Superman and breaks free. And that's what causes all heck to break loose. Uh, as Lex Luthor is expostulating all this stuff and Superman's buffoonishly protecting him. Uh, it, it's it, th This particular issue is really, really good. Really, do, really do good. Do you think we see... Um that uh very much after this the no the they don't really superman they usually you know is a smart capable reporter yeah. uh they don't really play up this aspect this is really unique to all-star superman and like i said very much night because even in the 1950s comics like clark kent never acted like 
a buffoon like this, right? This is almost comic relief. So this is really pretty original and a, a very good take. It's taking it to the extreme. You're mentioning earlier we have the time travelers. Yeah, these are future Superman who come back to help Superman out. Um, uh, and, you know, one of them is actually Superman. That's the unknown Superman who's all wrapped up. So he can see his pa one last time. And then, you know, the generation, and this is a big thing in DC that uh, is unique to DC, I should say. This idea that, that the heroes of today are going to create uh, um, a legacy that lasts for centuries, right? And you Thousands s of years. Yeah, yeah, thousands of years, right? And even the, the, the Legion of Superheroes, right, takes its inspiration from this era. And... You know, the Green Lantern Corps continues forward, and then there's a, a dynasty of Superman that continue forward. Uh, Grant Morrison did DC One Million, where it looked in the like far, far, far future, and in I, I think it was the year eighty three thousand five something, uh, and that um, that also talked about it. That is a big part of DC that is utterly unique. This this connection uh, of, with time. And uh, you have the connection with uh, older heroes, the Justice Society, uh, and then a connection with future heroes, uh, like I said, the Legion. This is Superman saying goodbye. goodbye at the end. Yep. And that's and that's where we'll leave it, actually. Yeah. So, um, what about do you trivia? guys? Let's take questions. Trivia, yeah. Qu uh, questions or trivia? Should I do questions based on? Um, uh, All Star Superman, Superman in general. I don't know how many people will have read uh, Superman. Um, what do you think? I think you should do a lowest question. I think you think I should do a lowest question. Jeez, that's a tough one. I like to be difficult. Well, I'll do something kind of related. So when New Fifty Two Superman dies. His energy kind of falls to Earth, and uh, one person in Superman's life absorbs it. Who is that, and who do they become? So how about that? Who is it, and what do they become? Excellent. Who do they become? Ben Brada. Lana Lane? Yeah, it's... And who did they become? We'll it's Lana. Questions. And Ben Brody should become Superman. Super. Uh, and it's not, it's Lang, not Lane, but she becomes Ben Brada. Becomes Superwoman for a period of time. And then her energy kind of ends and yeah. So are we, are we giving it to Ben Brada as close enough? Yeah, yeah, enough? that's fine. It's okay. close enough. Right. You got, you got Lana. It's, it's fine. It's close. All right. Will we ever see the Legion of Superheroes in the game? Yes, you absolutely will. I can totally promise you at some point, as long as I'm running the studio, you will see the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah. Okay. But not in the next, like, year. Not in the next year, no. no. <laughs> okay. It's just... I think the next year we've got planned out. Uh, well, you never know. Sometimes, like, we do have flexibility. In all honesty, we work about... The stuff we're working on today is, what, about six months out? So anything past yeah. six months is always flexible, depending upon different... Uh, things, but yeah, I love the Legion. Uh, I wish uh, I wish they bring it back. That and Justice Society, I really want to bring that bring that back. What other questions do you guys have for me? Yeah, questions about comics. Also, let us know uh, either now or later what you want. Uh, you know, Jack to recommend next. Yeah, when Superman comics now. What do you want? Superman next? or when our next? Uh, actually, when is our our next? Do they know our next content drop? Uh, not until Friday. Okay. Because that it's it, been teased actually. That's it's, actually it's my Titans, right? my favorite so. my favorite series of all time is the George Perez and Marv Wolfman run on Titans, bar none, greatest comic book uh, for an extended series, greatest ever. We'll do we'll do that next episode then. Yeah, no, it's it's really terrific. Yeah, definitely go out. Here's also the trade for Superman Doomsday. There's a lot of different covers, a lot of different versions of this. Uh, the great thing about it is. Uh, very, very uh, um, good value. It's only 20 bucks for the whole Death of Superman in 
uh, paper version. Obviously, you do the hardcover, it's more expensive. Uh, and Doomed is really good, too. Highly recommend both of those. We have people asking about the Titans episode now, but we're not going to do that. Until, no, no, no. But we'll talk about Titan more. A little later. Um, um, yes, I love the Doomsday Clock. I don't know. Let's see where Doomsday Clock goes before I see whether... If you guys aren't reading Doomsday Clock, it's threading together the Watchmen universe with the DC universe. Um, Jeff Johns, arguably one of the greatest modern comic book writers, period, uh, alongside Brian Michael Bendis. And you know what? DC has them both. Um, uh, uh, I am enjoying it highly. Uh, but let's see where it goes. I don't know where it's how it's going to end yet, any more than you do. And that'll kind of see whether there's a way for us to incorporate it. Now people are asking for content, which is not what the stream's about. Any other comics questions? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're trying to... Because we've got a great thing for gameplay on uh, uh, the Titans coming up mm -hmm. right we don't so we don't want to leak any of that kind of info now but yes uh the we're Titan almost stuff, ready yeah we're almost ready uh it's it's going to be what i consider the classic titan story um and uh oh batman and the outsiders yeah that's great stuff too will we ever get a martian manhunter story yeah maybe yeah don't we we should uh yeah you never know maybe by man nightfall that's another good idea yeah they have lots of good ideas. All right. It seems like we're out of comments questions, though, so we are going to sign off. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you like this stream, let us know. We'll do more like this. And yeah. obviously, I think we're doing Titans next, but whatever comics you would like to have recommended to you or talked about, uh, let us know, and we will get right on that. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Jack. Thank you, everybody. See ya. Bye-bye.